Yo, Sleepy Sheepy here. Hey. Today I have a really fun and kind of exciting invasion where the summons just kept coming and they didn't stop coming, which was a lot of fun. And it also kind of shed some light on how broken the summoning system is in Elden Ring, where if you're one invader, you get, you know, flasks back depending on you know what color the summon is so if they're blue you get two and if they're um, a sun bro then you get just one but you don't get any of your physics back and if these summons are a challenge um, which fortunately in this invasion they were not too challenging um, it can be like just kind of an insurmountable task to take on these players um, there's no cooldown time however this was a 22 minute invasion that I will be shortening into around 10 minutes just because um, you know there's a lot of cooldown time. Um, but the first approach that we have for this kind of invasion, um, where the host is not too aggressive and they're just kind of bringing summons into the world, is trying to one-shot this player with the Crozier's Hammer as well as a Giant Crusher. So we can kind of be suspecting that they're gonna go for some jumping attacks. They're really uh, going for a one-shot style build that requires a jumping attack, you know, trying to get that power stance damage in all at the same time. So if we can pull out our Miser Accord and just go for a backstab, um, we'll be in in good uh, a good spot so we are able to very quickly kill both those players both of them were running around a thousand vigor um, and that's kind of another interesting point is just how low the vigor is for some of these players at level 125 and up so another blue comes into the world they're not really able to get their bearings too well and they're kind of just running away I feel like they saw that the host wasn't helping so they just wanted to run away the whole time um, so we need something to chase them down so we'll be switching over to our spike cestus which is great for chase downs and we do see another blue coming into the world right as this first blue dies. So I definitely recommend um, a Spike Cestus for chase downs. It is kind of unreactable on the running attack and very hard to dodge in both of those hits, especially if they're very close to you. Um, so that was effective there. And then we have a player that's using a, another colossal weapon, which is going to allow us to grab a backstab very early on, which is pretty nice. Um, we're definitely doing some fishing here. We're trying to set ourselves up with our roll that will put us in a good spot for just like a roll in backstab and then here we're trying to be patient with their attacks and we're also going to be looking for a lot of counter damage so the claymore is fantastic at grabbing counter damage especially with the heavy attack because it comes out as a poke and you can charge it if you want to so um, it gives you some hyper armor and we'll also be running the spear talisman as well as the axe talisman to kind of like boost those moments right there. Now this blue has a pretty heads up play where they go for endure and then the moon spell which can do a ton of damage. Um, so I wouldn't have been able to knock them out of that animation but we are able to kill them. So uh, <laughs> we had some downtime in the invasion so I just wanted to include this. So I don't know if you're familiar with the chainsaw glitch but there's a different version which does no damage and is in my opinion quite wholesome. Um, so if you, instead of switching to the shunter, go for the finger, it will do the same stun that a greatsword does, but no damage. So you can't actually hurt another player by using this glitch, and they have to also be, like, touching the finger, so you can avoid it very easily. There's no, like, invisible projectile, but if you are getting hit by it, it's kind of hilarious. Your character just gets stunned, and the fear of this ticklish finger was so much that that player rolled off the edge. So that brings our kill count up to six, which is pretty solid, but again... Um, you know, fighting three players is hard enough. Um, six seems a little ridiculous for a single invasion. Um, and we do have another blue come into the world. So this player is going for some pre-buffs. Um, they're not really able to get their bearings. I think they maybe wanted to swap weapons or do something in their menu, but they're trying to run away just just totally not get hit and um, maybe set themselves up for some damage now that they've done their buffs. But again, we'll switch over to the Spike Cessus and find that is it's, it is extremely effective at grabbing these chase downs, especially these players that are either trying to light roll or have low poise. So at a certain point, a red came into the world, the only red in the chain of like 14 summons, and they got killed by this blue that was using the Blasphemous Blade. So we wanted to very quickly switch over to our Spike Cestus and grab that kill. And the host kind of comes along for the ride, just jumping in appreciation, and we start heading back to the site of Grace. So predictably, they summon somebody new, which is pretty cool. Um, definitely fine by me at this point. I'm having a very good time. And this very polite summon goes for a bow. Um, I take that moment to grab a backstab, nearly one-shot them, and then get hit by Giant's Flame Take the knocked off the ledge. Just kidding. Um, but I was actually totally concerned that all my efforts were going to be for naught, and I was going to be killed by just like a random explosion. So a scary moment there. Um, it really looked like 
I was gonna die there to me, um, but it was totally fine. And here we have a weird moment with some desync of the projectile where uh, the blue hit me with a madness snipe, but I did not see it at all on my screen. So uh, just fun netcode moment there. And we do get hit by another giant's flame take the, um, I realized at a certain point that I had a uh, talisman on that was going to increase the amount of da damage that I take. So. I uh, switch that around so that I can get a little bit more HP from my flask and then switch over to the Great Bow and I'm able to actually take care of that blue from around the corner. So that brings our kill count up to nine. Uh, again, pretty ridiculous. I enjoy it, especially in this invasion because, you know, these are all manageable players and I'm not being completely overwhelmed and obliterated by like three players with Dragon Breath or three players with you know, uh, sleep halberds or something, some of the more broken stuff. Everybody is using stuff that is manageable when you're running just a pure strength build in a claymore, um, but that is not always the case. And if you think about an invasion <laughs> that has, you know, um, upwards of 10 opponents and all of them are using the most broken stuff in the game, it does make you think maybe the summoning system is not perfect. Maybe there should be a bit of a cooldown time. So um, again, we're just trying to either grab some backstabs on this player that's using impaling thrust, um, get our chip damage. Everybody in this invasion seemed to be kind of hesitant to heal, which was fascinating to me like they did not you know just back off and heal um, even though they had low health and they were playing against an opponent with full health so um, another successful kill there and moving on we do have a new player I was going for some uh, cheeky fan dagger throws just trying to practice on getting headshots with fan daggers because it does put the opponent into a stun animation if you do manage to land that so um, that can be pretty nice and actually useful in invasions um, doesn't always work out that well, but it's not a bad thing to practice if you have 2k hours in this game. So this player is not really being too aggressive. It's kind of hard to tell what their plan is. Um, I would also like to take a moment to appreciate how ridiculous the Power Stance Giant Crusher roll animation looks. Um, very silly, but here we do learn what their intentions are. They're going for Trolls Roar and trying to knock me off the ledge. So fortunately I didn't die from that. I was able to space it pretty well. And then they kind of reverse Uno card themselves and roll off the ledge. So uh, that brings our kill count up to 11 and just in time another blue comes in So this person is running a great sword. So I immediately have some respect for them uh, They kind of shake their weapon at me just kind of letting me know they're ready to go. I throw a fan dagger um, You know not expecting a headshot, but at least just hoping to get their aggression and here we're able to get our 12th kill just with three hits with our um, claymore so again the pierce damage being helpful we're able to get that roll catch and finally I initiate um, some attacks on the host going for just a regular punch without a weapon. Um, I didn't want to actually do any damage to start things off, but we're in a spot now where we can go for this one-on-one. -on -one. And this player definitely did a good job, um, probably a better job than any of the previous 12 players in the world. Um, they were pretty effective with their power stance curve sword. So I had invaded this player actually earlier and was thinking about parrying them because I had parried them in a previous invasion and the curve swords, especially when their power stance can be very susceptible to parries, especially on their running attack. But they switch over to the two-handed move set, which I think is a good decision. Um, I get frostbitten and I'm pretty low health, so I go ahead and heal. I didn't really want to just honor duel this player after fighting 12 others. Um, I <laughs> thought it would just be kind of a to the death moment, which, you know, I don't know, people can have feelings about that, but this is an invasion. So here we do get an unfortunate pivot, which means we still get hit by the Zamor Ice Storm. Um, I go for a Ballas, just slightly outspacing them, and we go for a bit of a trade here. Um, I I think I may have been able to get them if I had switched to a different weapon, but uh, I kind of wanted to stick with the Claymore. Um, and then they go for a heal themselves and we reset back to neutral. Um, they go for an FP as well, and we're just kind of back to where we started. Um, so I feel like I have a more um, pragmatic approach to this player where <laughs> I've been playing a little bit fast and loose from the 12 others and I now need to respect this player a little bit more, respect their uh, space and not get too aggressive. So I'm trying to find opportunities a little bit more carefully here, um, you know, try to potentially bait them into rolls that I can roll catch with a heavy attack and here I get like 700 plus damage with the counter damage that comes with the piercing attack on a Claymore. They go for a very nicely placed Zamor Ice Storm um, and I think here they may 
wanted to go for their FP or their regular flask, but did their FP flask. And right then, a blue gets summoned in. So, uh, would have been a 14th player, but no such luck. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If you wouldn't mind considering subscribing, I'd appreciate it, and I hope you have a good day.